good morning, or whatever it is, and welcome again to Humpke's study here. In any case, today we're going to look at uh, some arithmetic of matrix matrices, matrix arithmetic. But before we do, I'd like to emphasize again or talk about what it means to have a matrix represent a function. So if we start with a particular matrix, and I'll use this one over and over today, 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0, 1. This is a matrix M. What does it mean for this matrix to represent a function? It means that, uh, say a function L, it means that L of any vector x is M times x. Now, L in this case will map two-dimensional space into three-dimensional space. How do we know? Because of the way this multiplication works. So let's just do this. What does this actually mean? L of the vector x is um, uh, m times x. This is the same thing as L, if I do it vertically, x1, x2 equals this vector, uh, this matrix, 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0, 1, times x1, x2. And this is two-dimensional vector because there are two columns here in the way multiplication goes. This row has to multiply this column. If this column had three things in it, it would be too long to multiply by. So it's kind of the geometry of the matrix itself, the size of the matrix. But in any case, when you do that multiplication, you get x1 plus 2x2 minus x1 plus 3x2, this times this, and then simply x2. So if you're solving for a particular value, like 1 equals 1, 2, 3 is 1, 2, 3 in the range, that gives you a system of equations or an augmented coefficient matrix to solve. They're, they all mean basically the same thing. And you can check whether this function is one-to-one -one and onto, one-to-one or onto, depending on what the properties of this matrix are. So that if you reduce this matrix to reduced row echelon form, if it's got a pivot in every column, then this function is one-to-one. -one. If it's got a pivot in every row, then this function is onto. And that characterizes one-to-one -one and onto. So those are some properties you can check using the matrix representation. Now also following from this is that uh, there are two properties that if you take L of x plus y, two or let's say x1, uh, let's do x plus y, that this ends up to be L of x plus L of y. And the second property is L of any scalar times x is S times L of x. This first property is, says that L respects addition. And the second property says L respects scalar multiplication. And L is a linear transformation, means that L has a matrix representation, or equivalently, that L respects addition and scalar multiplication. So this is nice to know if any function respects both of these, then it has a matrix representation and vice versa. So that is what the definition of linear transformation means, one of two things, either L has a matrix representation or it respects addition, vector addition, and scalar multiplication. So this is background for what we're doing. We're trying to use these matrices in order to analyze the functions. And we will begin to live in the arithmetic of matrix land, but what we are doing is reflecting properties of the underlying functions, which, are, which for us will be all linear transformations. Okay, 
So that is sort of the background for what we're doing. And uh, so here we are in matrix land. And over here, I'm going to put function land. And it won't just be function land. This will be linear transformation land. But it's we're talking about functions over there. And in matrix land, this is the way addition goes. If you take uh, a matrix like 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0, 1, and add it to another matrix 3, 0, 4, 5, 1, 2, what you end up with is maybe what you would expect. 4, 2, you add component wise. So minus 1 and 4 is 3, 5 and 3 is 8, 1, 3. So you add component wise, and this reflects the fact that if you take two linear transformations, or actually two functions, and take L of x plus T of x, this will be equal to the added function evaluated at x. This represents the sum of the two functions. Each one of these matrices represents the individual function. So L is represented by the first, T is represented by the second, and this represents the sum of those two functions, what it does to an X. And subtraction works the same way. The next one is scalar multiplication, so that if we take a number like 3 and multiply by 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0, 1, this is equal to 3, 6, minus 3, 9, 0, 3. So you multiply through. And uh, this reflects the fact that um, a scalar s times L of x is equal to what L does of s, uh, the scalar s times x. So this actually reflects property of L respecting scalar multiplication. This doesn't happen with, neither of these happen with all functions. They, the, the, well, the first one does. But the second one only happens with linear uh, transformations. Uh, they get a little harder uh, than this, a little different. But these are the basics. On this one, maybe I should do one more part of this one. If you begin with 3, 6, minus 3, 9, 0, 3, you can look at this as you can factor out of 3. So this is equal to 3 times 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0, 1. So this property can basically be looked at either way. So can the first one. You can divide this up into a sum of other functions. So factoring out, multiplying through, adding. And in function land, the same sort of thing happens. All right. The next one is a little more complicated. And I'll talk about it here first. And we're going to begin with two matrices, 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0, 1. And I'm going to try to multiply by another matrix. Let's multiply by the matrix um, uh, 1, 4, 3, 0, 1, 1. So I want to multiply these matrices. And the way ma matrix multiplication will go, it will go exactly like we did before, where you take a row times a column. And in this instance, there's an issue because this only has two coordinates. This has three. So this is actually no go. You cannot do this. These matrices are not compatible for, math, for multiplication. So if you want a matrix that's compatible, the number of rows of the second one have to correspond to the number of columns of the first one. So maybe this is 3, 4, 3, 1. 
and maybe this is, uh, well, let's just do this one. This one we already did. You can multiply these two, in which case you get uh, three and two is five, minus three and three is zero, and one. So you, here you get a vector out, which is a type of a matrix, and you are looking at m times x equals this. So what this is, is function evaluation. L of a vector x is m times x. So this goes back to the definition of what it means to represent a function evaluation. But you can do this multiplication for other um, matrices other than 3, 1. So for example, if I look at this matrix, we can multiply these together. And because the number of columns equals the number of rows. And so when we do that, we get 3 and 2 is 5. We get minus 1 uh, plus 2 is 0. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. Minus 3 plus 3 is 0. And 1 and 6 is 8. And down here, we get 1, 2. So here we get another uh, three row, two column matrix. Uh, by the way, here for this one, for example, I could talk about the entry A sub uh, two, three. This means the entry that's in the second row, third column. So second row tells you that it's in there, third column, uh, second row, let's do, there is no third column. So let's do second row, first column. So look at the first column we get here. And so the entry that's in the third, let's try this again. I forget what's here now. Uh, five, zero, zero, eight, I think. Yes, and then one, two. When we look at the second row, that's this, and the first column, that's this, and the entry that is in both is zero. So this is zero. So this is just a way of designating specific elements of the given matrix. All right. So uh, what's going on here? In order to multiply, you have to have the number of columns equaling the number of rows. So uh, this first matrix, uh, so, um, otherwise, uh, you, you can't multiply these together. Okay, so this first matrix maps R2 into R2. So T maps R2 into R2. The function representing that matrix is T. Uh, the number of columns tells you what the domain is, and the number of rows tells you what the range is. L maps two dimensions, two columns, into R3. This matrix over here, the, this is uh, 500812, it represents the composition of these two, L of T of X, meaning L evaluated at T of X. 
So it begins with vectors that are in R2, this two, and ends with vectors that are in R3. So this one is the same as this, begins with R2, ends in R3. So the number of columns always tells you what the domain space is. The number of rows will tell you what the range space is. Okay. So let's let's try another one of these. Let's take one that maps R2 into R3. So we will have two columns and three rows. And then let's map uh, R3 into R2. So um, if we begin with, um, first of all, L, first of all, L maps into three space, T maps three space into two space. So if we begin with L and then use T, so the composition is this way, this mapping will begin with R2, go to R3, and end in R2. So as functions, we have this. And this order is important. If you begin first with T, it takes three dimensions into two dimensions. And then L will take two dimensions back to three dimensions. So L composed with T goes the other way. It begins with R3 because you're beginning with T. This is the inside function in function notation. It maps to R2, but then L takes R2 to R3. So these mean quite different things. This one begins with two space and ends at two space. This one begins with three space and ends at three space. So this is on the function side. Let's see what the matrices look like. And we need a couple matrices to do this. So this one, L will have L is represented by this matrix, and let's use 1, 2, minus 1, 3, 0, 1. It will have two columns and three rows. T, on the other hand, is represented by a matrix that has three columns and only two rows. So maybe 1, 1, minus 2, 3, 4, 1. And if you want to begin in two space, <coughs> go to three space and then back to two space. So we're here, we're going to begin in two dimensions. We're going to begin with L, one, two, minus one, three, zero, one. And then after that, we're going to go to T. So this will map two space to two space. The matrix we should get should be two dimensional. Let's see what we get. First row, first column is one, minus one is zero, plus zero is zero. Two and three is five, minus two is three, 